Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps, healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Miriam. Here's so does that promise. Good morning, good morning. Let's open up with prayer. Thank you, Father God, for this word that you're giving us today. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to illuminate and compare and give us, Lord, your understanding of the, the Holy Scriptures, that you have given this word, Lord, for such a time as this, Lord God, to raise us all up in the fruit of our righteousness, Lord God, in the knowledge of you. In, in Jesus' name, they all said yes and amen. Amen? So the Lord gave me a great message. It's called, you know, I've titled it, uh, Seed Time and Harvest. And he gave this to me a couple weeks ago. So it's like, I know you've been hearing a lot about seed time and harvest in the last week. But, it, you know, the Lord gave this to me before that even. So I was like, thank you, Lord. So turn with me to Luke chapter 8. Ta-da! Did I do it? Thank you, Lord. And Luke chapter, it says, in verse 1 through 3, it says, And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. So the he is obviously Jesus here, right? And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Shuza, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, were ministered unto, which ministered unto him of their substance. So the Lord is talking about all his entourage and others that were with them that ministered of their substance, right? And in the chapter before that, in, oh, it just says one verse after that. Okay. <laughs> All righty, I'm getting to learn this thing too. Okay, and in verse 37 of chapter 7, it says, And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, right? And stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. So she was what? Giving of her substance. I learned later that that alabaster box was like um, uh, part of her dowry. It's that, that very expensive ointment, a perfumed ointment that she gives to her husband on their wedding night. And so she had, it's very expensive. It, uh, I guess it, somebody told me once that they calculated the cost of it, and it was like a year's wages. Yeah, very, that's perfume for her wedding night. So, you know, it's very expensive, but she gave up her substance. And so the, the topic here is of giving of your substance, amen, and the importance of it and what it's all about, amen. And I, I know that you already know, but God wants to give us further enlightenment of it. So in chapter 8 of Luke, verse 4, he said, And when much people were gathered together and were come out of the city, he spake a parable. And I'm not sure. Oh, and he spake a parable. Oh, yeah, you got to move it for every verse. All right. And a, sower went <laughs> and a sower went out to sow his seed. And he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away. 
because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked it out. And others fell on good ground, that's you, and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears, let him hear. And that, that word, let him hear, is like, get understanding. Figure it out. Know what Jesus is saying to you. Amen? And so the word here is focused on planting seed and planting on good ground. And in verse 15 it says, but that on the good ground are they, because he's explaining this parable to his disciples, because they didn't get it either. They go, huh? What does that have to do with anything? Sowing seed. And Jesus said, all right, listen up, guys, so you can understand. But that on good ground are they which in, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Hmm. Bring forth fruit with patience. Y'all want some fruit? You want some increase? You want multiplication of your seed sown. Amen? Well, this is what we're teaching here today. So a seed what becomes what germinated when it soaks up what moisture, right? You got to plant this old dried out seed, right? It's dead to you now. It's not going to do you any good. It's a seed until you plant it in the ground. And then when it's planted in the ground, what happens? It springs up. And they which are on good soil are going to what? Produce fruit, right? Being unable to change. That's all right. But listen up. We're not, we're not going there yet anyway. I'm going to show you about the seed and what happens. And this is the same thing that happens with your money. And the same thing that happens when you want healing or any other thing from the Lord, right? Because you have to have it by what? Faith, right? And so we know this. I'm not talking to... People that are, 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 you know, brand new in this. And even if you are, you'll get it. You'll get it. It's not a hard thing. So when you plant a seed, whether it be for your healing, for your finances, for your children, for any other thing, right? That seed is what? It's got to become saturated. And it becomes saturated. And this is a very imperative. And that seed is not saturated, it won't do anything. It will die in the ground. Right? If it doesn't become germinated, it will die. It will rot. Have you ever seen a seed that, that didn't um, germinate properly? Like maybe it was too cold or something or too wet and it just soaked up and, and just kind of molded and, and died. Right? But God is a, has given us good seed. And so that seed, what is the word of God? He says, now the parable is this in verse 11. He says, Jesus gave the disciples um, the explanation. And that's when he said, the seed is the word of God in verse 11. I'm not sure where it is there, but um, he says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. His toy. <laughs> I think it's back the other way. I think we missed it. Oh well. I, I guess I missed it. I didn't put it in. So now the the seed is the the word of God. Okay. So the seed planted is that word of God. That's got to be what germinated. And the way that word gets germinated is by the, the seed of the word. You have to fill it with the word of God. You meditate. Amen. And this is going to make real sense to you if you've heard Robert's preaching. Meditation brings what? Revelation. Revelation brings motivation. Motivation brings action. Action brings fruit. 
So we're going to tie in these two teachings. So the motivation or the, the meditation on this seed is getting the word of God in you. Because what? Our minds need to be renewed to what the word says. And what God says is right. And so that seed of the word of God has got to be saturated. So saturated with the word that all of a sudden that word becomes alive and you get the revelation. Amen? And when once you get the revelation, then you that's that, aha, I got it. God wants me well. God wants me healed. He's done everything for me. It's all mine. It's mine. And you, all of a sudden that becomes real to you. And you know that you know that you know. When you got the, the, uh, the idea that Jesus is the Son of God and that he wants to make you his child, all of a sudden when you heard that, maybe the first time you heard it, it didn't sink in. But you heard it, you heard it, you heard it. And when it sunk in and finally you realized, oh, that's mine, that's real. Jesus is alive. All I have to do is ask him into my heart and I'll be saved. All of a sudden, God wants me wealthy. All I have to do is believe his right, what he says is right, that I'm supposed to be wealthy. That's what God says is right. He doesn't want his children lacking. He doesn't want his children sick. He wants you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Amen? And so the way to get there is what? Meditate on the word. Soak up all those scriptures. And you've heard this. This is not new information for you. Soak up all those scriptures. If you want healing, on healing. If you want wealth, soak up all those scriptures on wealth. Amen? And then do what those scriptures say to do. And what does it say in Romans 10.10? It says what? You believe unto righteousness. So that's the believing. You believe that that's the right thing. That's the right thing. God wants me well. God wants me healthy. God wants me wealthy. You believe unto the right thing of God. You know, and God showed me, he says, you know, when you say a salvation prayer, we say, we lead him in a prayer, and I used to say, and make me the kind of person you want me to be. You know, I'd have them repeat that. And the Lord changed, put it in a different thing in my heart. He said, have them say, instead of make me the kind of person you want me to be, make all things right in my life. You know, and so when you say, tell that person that just got born again, you know, you say, Jesus, come into my heart. Father, forgive all my sins and make all things right in my life. You're giving God free course to take away all the things that the devil has done to bring destruction and ruin to your life, all the soul and monies and the time and all the effort. You're giving God free reign to replace all of that and bring it back to you. Amen? And of course, then you say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And the, see, that's the salvation that we're going for, isn't it? That's the salvation that we're going for. And so how does that, the next step, the, the salvation is called the motivation. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, I, that's right. We, the motivation is when you finally say, oh, I've got it. I've got it. It's mine. It's mine. Because you confess it, you know, when you realize it, that's when you got the revelation. But when you say it, that's the motivation. You haven't actually done anything. You haven't reaped any harvest yet. But as soon as you say it, something changed. As soon as you said, Jesus, come into my heart, something changed. You became a new person. You became alive unto God. As soon as you said, Say with your mouth, that's mine. Wealth is mine. Something happens in the spirit. It brings motivation. 
because you know that that's yours and you know that God wants you to have it. So your motivation is like, oh, that's mine, I'm going to get it. You know, when you know that you're going to get paid, you don't have trouble getting up and going to job, right? But when you know that God's gotten for something for you, that motivation becomes, whoa, yeah, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. You know it's yours. You know that it's yours. Because that, and that's what happens with that knowing in your heart. So you what? You meditate on the word, you find out, oh, God wants me healed right now. It's now. God wants me wealthy right now. And so what, you meditate on that, and you read all the scriptures on it, and all of a sudden you realize, it is mine. It is mine. When I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, they told me I had it. I only got one word, so I said, yeah. And I said, that ain't it. Right, <laughs> and they said, "Yeah, it is." One word. <laughs> it said, "I'll get it heavenly language." One word is no language. <laughs> My thinking and reasoning was kicking in, right? <laughs> and you know, and I was trying. The devil was trying to steal it from me. And then I meditated on it. And I thought about it. They said I got it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I kept saying it, yeah, yeah. You know, and then finally, about a week later, it dawns on me, no, devil's lying to me. I did get it. And as soon as I said that, boom. Oh, I got a whole sentence. <laughs> I was slow. <laughs> I, you know, and I got a whole sentence. I mean, instead of just saying, yeah, I got Yata, 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 the yo. <laughs> I know, I, I practiced it for so long. I still can't, I still remember it, right? <laughs> Trying to get to that next word. <laughs> that took another month. <laughs> you laugh, and I was, I was determined I was going to get it. <laughs> but see, you know, because I, I was so taught and, and convinced that it wasn't true, right? And so it took me a little while to get over that, right? I had to unscrew that teaching. And so, but the, the meditation, saturated with the word, right? Revelation comes when, oh, that's mine. And motivation comes when it comes out your mouth. I receive that in Jesus' name. So that's when we pray for the sick, we say, Say, thank you, Jesus, because that's that motivation. When they know that they got it, when you say it, when you say, thank you, Jesus, you know that, oh, thank you, Jesus. What did I just get? I said, thank you. What did I get? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, when you're new in it, that's exactly what you do. You think, now, what did I get? Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah, I got healed. Yeah, oh, it is better. <laughs> But it didn't get better until he said, thank you, Jesus. Because that is that growth of the seed of the word. That's that growing portion of it. And then when you get that, finally, the light get turned on and you realize that you have it, that something has changed in the spirit realm. Amen. It changes in the spirit and then it becomes evident in the flesh. We call that manifested in the flesh it, because you you have it but you don't see it yet I mean just because you put that seed in the ground doesn't mean you see a plant does it no oh, it got to germinate it does all that stuff under the ground but that motivation period is when it's reaching up to the light it's reaching up to the to the top where it can stretch out and get the full glory and then comes what? The action time. The action time. That's when you see the little leaves popping out. Bing, 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 bing. And it's growing, growing, and growing. And pretty soon some little buds come out there. Gets, you know, all bees do their thing. And then pretty soon you get a little fruit on there. And you've got to be patient. Patient with that. What is that time? That's that time when you know it's yours. 
You know it's yours. You've done all that you're supposed to do. You know that God gave that to you. And see, don't give up here. Don't give up. Keep watering it with the word. The word that you meditated on. You keep watering it and say, no, God, your word said that that's mine. That's mine. That's my fruit. It will continue to grow. It will have seed time and harvest. Lord, that I've done the seed time. And now, Lord God, it's growing and growing and growing. And I'm going to have a harvest. I'm going to have that harvest. And so that's that time of what? Rejoicing. You see the little leaves. Have you ever seen, you planted a little plant yourself and seen, oh, look, there's some leaves. And you get all excited. I was like, oh, it's got two now. It's got two. <laughs> yeah. And it keeps growing and growing. And then when that first little bud comes out and that first little tomato on that little thing. No, look, that little flower turned into a, a tomato. It's ever so tiny, but I can see it there. That's the tomato. And, you know, and I'm thinking about planting tomatoes. So, <laughs> but, so you know that it's not going to be long before it forms the whole tomato. It's going to be green as it can be. <laughs> but it will turn red or whatever kind of tomato you planted. And it will, what? There will come that day when you're able to pick it and to ha enjoy that fruit. Amen? And that's the same with the Word of God, that you... During that growing time, you're rejoicing because you know that that harvest is coming. You may not see it yet in the spirit, but it is coming. You will, you will enjoy. God will show you little things about it. And when it's finances, that action time and or healing, you, you do something you couldn't do before because you know it's getting better and better. And with, with finances... You change your mindset. It's a change of mindset, isn't it? And you start lining up with the Word of God. The Word says, you're the head and not the tail. Okay, that means I don't borrow, right? Because the borrower is a servant to the lender. And so God wants you to, he, he says, you will lend to many nations and you will not borrow, right? And so you line, start lining, okay, Lord, show me how to not, not to do this. And how to grow into that. And maybe you have, you know, you, I, I like this part where maybe you don't have a, a $100 to sow into the ground right now, right yet. But you start with the one. Wait until it produces a crop and then you go, ha, I got more. <laughs> and then you put that in the ground, wait for it to produce its crop, and then you plant more. And it just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing. You may not go from, you know, uh, a dollar to a million dollars overnight, you'll have to go harvest, plant, harvest, plant, harvest, plant, harvest, plant. But it will get there. Amen? It will get there. And that's what, it, what with faith and patience, it says in Luke 8, 15, it says, but that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and Bring forth fruit with patience. Amen? Bring it forth with patience. Then Mark 4.20 says, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it. And I like to put in the word, take it. Take it. Receiving is not just, oh, thank you. No. Receiving is taking it and putting it to work. Right? Receiving is going to, Okay, Lord, you said I'm healed. I'm moving that foot. You, I couldn't do it before. Or I'm going to move it now. Amen? And when it's with your money, that doesn't mean go spend money that you don't have. It means, okay, Lord, I'm going to start thinking like a rich person. I'm going to start thinking like a rich person. I'm, see, the things that I want, if I had all the money, how would I be operating? And that's what you have to imagine and walk in. It's, I know, it's like, you don't have the money yet, but so what? You have to get the mindset of someone who does have money. Now, when someone has money, and money is no object, and that's the way you have to approach things, what do you ask for? Do you ask for what you think you can afford, or do you ask for what you really want? What you, really want. What you want. Duh. 
right? Otherwise, you know, why would you go to a, a store you really don't like, but the, the things are cheaper there, you know, and, and y y you know, you're going to settle for something that's not quite what you wanted, but it's okay, right? At first, maybe that's the best you can buy. And so get by with that until God increases you, and he will increase you. As long as you keep sowing, he keeps increasing. Seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest. So when you plant that first little harvest, that first little seed and make the harvest, you don't eat all that seed. Don't eat all your harvest. Save some to plant. <laughs> Amen? And, you know, because maybe you planted $1 to get, to get 10 back. And then, so, okay, eat one, sure, two, three, whatever, you know, tithe, tithe, and then plant the rest, and plant the rest, amen? That's your seed. That is your seed that you're planting back into the ground. So what? We hear the word. We meditate on it. We saturate ourselves. Just saturate. No, no, God, God says this is for me. I know his word is right. Even though I don't see it and I don't understand it, it's his word. And I'm going to meditate on it until I get that revelation that, aha, I get it, Lord. I get it. Maybe you don't understand that God wants you wealthy right now because it's too much. It's, Lord told me a long time ago, he says, Mary, if you want a mansion now uh, or expect to get one in heaven, you're supposed to expect to get one now. And it's still, I'm still meditating on that. I'm still meditating on that because it's still too much for me to imagine having. Okay? So I have to meditate on that and meditate on it. And really, finally, when I realize God says, yeah, that, I want you to have that, then you receive it and go, that, the aha, Lord, you want me to have that. Thank you, Lord. And then the motivation comes when you say, thank you, Jesus, I receive it. I take it. That's mine. You want me to have that. Amen? It may be what, like when you saw that car that you wanted at the car show, and you went, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. That's that motivation. And then that, that motivation brings it forth the action. And I want to tell you this. The action does not mean that you have to earn the money to go get it. The action means that you get to praise the Lord until he bring it to you. Oh, that's different, isn't it? It's either by your works or his. His is better. Amen? He shows you the job where you can get seed. And then he gives you the rest. Amen? So, believe unto righteousness. Confess unto salvation. Oh, right? And then wait for it. Wait for it. And you know what? God told me, he says, you know, it doesn't have to take forever. <laughs> you can have your increase the next day, that day. It doesn't have to take a long time. Amen? And so our financial growth and arranging ourselves under God's rules and what he says to do. See, this is where... where uh, Malachi and Proverbs 3. He says, acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall what direct your paths because God will show us how to make a profit. He will lead us in the path to go to get us from this into what we wanted. Amen? He will lead you down that path so that that thing that you went, that's mine! that you will have it. You may forget about it sometimes because it's like, okay, you know, do you stand there and wait for that thing to, and stare at that little plant and wait and wait and wait and wait? No, what a waste of time. Don't worry about it. It'll grow. It'll take care of it, right? God's got it. God has it. Don't you worry about it. Your job then is to what? Bring in the kingdom of God. To bring in his kingdom. He's, he's got all of our finances, all of our needs and everything all taken care of. You know Matthew 6, right? 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his and his righteousness, his right way of doing things, and all these things will be added unto you. Okay? Now see, I always thought before that, okay, that means that, you know, I'll get things slowly the way the world gets it. But no, it's God's way of doing it. I'm learning to let go and let God. Amen? Let go and let God do the work and bring it to you. What's our job? Ask and receive. That's our part. But what do we do to seek his kingdom? We seek and save the lost. We're out to destroy the works of the devil and to live in life more abundantly. Right? And so when we're living in that life more abundantly, our whole focus, if the world, they're focused on how to get by and how to pay their bills and how to, to uh, bring in wealth into their house. I don't know where I am with this. <laughs> well, let's... 2 Corinthians 9. Now you guys see how I don't stay on my notes. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed. I've been caught. <laughs> so the sower sows what the 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 seed, right? We sow it and we have increase. And the increase of your righteousness is what? It's this the increase of what God says is right. It's that make all things right in my life. Sickness, got to go. Poverty, out the other door. Right? Distress, worry, fear, got to go. They're not of God. So we're asking God to make all things right in our life. We're seeking all his right things. His kingdom come. His will be done. And that's what? For us to have all of our needs, all of our desires, everything that we ever wanted. I know it sounds so greedy, but it's not. Don't you want everything good for your children? What father doesn't? It's not greedy at all to say, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. No, it's a gift from God. Receive it with joy. Amen? And the whole purpose of that is to what? Show the world... That our God is good. God draws all men to himself from his goodness. Otherwise, what good is it to serve a God who is not going to love you? All the world is looking for the love, aren't they? And that's how God shows his love, by taking good care of us. That is the covenant. It's a covenant of love. And God wants to show you his love that you never question again whether the God loves you or not. Do you know how many people wonder if God really loves them? If they really matter to God? But see, what we have to do is what? Be willing and obedient. Lay down our lives. He sent Jesus and Jesus laid down his life for us. Are we willing to do the same? And when we do, we are that seed that is planted in the ground and will flourish and multiply and replenish the earth. Amen? And that replenish the earth doesn't mean it's up to us to plant more trees and do all We There are people to do that. But the replenishing of the earth is to seek and save the lost because we are taking this earth back from the devil and bringing it into all of God's kingdom. Amen? So we are that light unto the Gentiles that will bring them out of the prison. Right? In Isaiah 42. We bring them out of the prison. And the prison is with the, the bondage that the devil has them under. That they have to work to make a living. That they have to go to the doctor and, and spend all of their money and all of their time in seeking some sort of cure. And the doctor says, well, I, we can't cure that, but we can help your body fight it. You know, and thank you, Lord, for doctors that have got the wisdom to give us, help us with antibiotics and, and all the things that they have learned and to, to help us live until we can get a hold of what God says we can have. Amen? And so, to this end, also I write that ye might know the proof 
that I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. God wants us to be obedient in all things. Amen? Is that right, Robert? Amen. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive. Hmm. Also, for I forgive only. Well, this isn't the verse that I wanted. <laughs> so anyway, so thank you, Lord, that the love of God, we give, show that by giving up our love of things, right? God will give us all things. He says, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. When you have all things added unto you, that, it, that he will increase the fruits of your righteousness. He's made all things right in your life again. What is your only focus left but to do his will? Amen? And that's the whole point of God blessing his children. So they don't worry about doing it the world's way. We are in a higher world. We are, are part of the kingdom of God. And being in that kingdom, that the fruits of your righteousness is where I ended. And that's 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye having all sufficiency in all things. You have the money for anything that you could possibly desire. If you say, I want that, God will make sure you got the money for it. Amen? And this is the reason why. May abound to every good work. Right? So that we can be the light of the world. To abound in every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministered seed to the sower, both ministered bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which is increasing all God's rightness in your life. Amen? Who wants God's rightness? In? Yeah, because that's what? Everything that's good and honest and pure, holy, easy to be entreated, right? Without hypocrisy. It is what it is. Amen? So that's the reason that we give. That's the reason that we give unto the Lord. We are planting seed that he may multiply it and give to us all those things that we have a desire of. Amen? So when we work a job, we're not, what, working to live off of our seed because you'll never have all your heart's desire. I mean, seriously? How many years are you going to work? They got us on, on 30-year loans for a house, 30 years to own your house, right? And, and, you know, loans to buy your car and, you know, go use a card, credit card to buy this or that, right? And the world system, the bankers get all the money and they're serving themselves of us. All the money that we work for gets to pay the, the interest, Right? And eventually we will own the, own the thing. But how many times over do we end up paying for that house over a period of 30 years? You know, or how much longer on that car that you financed, you know, at 5 or 6% interest sounds low, but by the time you pay it off, it's not. You've paid a couple thousand more for that car than you should have. Right? And so that's the world system. But God says, no, give it to me and I will multiply it back to you. Amen? So I want you to remember that it, whether it be healing, whether it be finances, no matter what it is that you're seeking God from, that word that you've been meditating, meditation brings revelation. Revelation brings motivation. It's mine. <laughs> That's saying it, right? Action, rejoicing, rejoicing, and getting your head right. <laughs> Rejoicing, right? Because rejoicing brings right thoughts. Right thinking makes for right living. And then, right, the harvest time. And then it's the harvest, the fruit. You get what you have said. Amen? So let's close with prayer. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, 
that you have given us all this understanding, Lord God, to bring your kingdom into our hands. We bless you, Lord God, and we receive it in Jesus' name. And they all said, it's mine. It's mine. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you, you pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at rider.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.